there are still so many stories that have not been told when it comes to sexual harassment in the workplace. I'm on a mission to give voice to these untold stories. All right, as many of you know, Gretchen Carlson is an award-winning journalist, a tireless advocate for female empowerment, and now a much sought-after inspirational speaker and social commentator. In fact, she now has a new two-hour documentary special airing on Lifetime called Gretchen Carlson Breaking the Silence, which uncovers, as you just saw, untold stories of sexual harassment and abuse around the country. Gretchen joins us this morning to tell us more. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You know, what's interesting about this, Gretchen, when I first heard that you were doing this series and I kind of just pictured it in my mind, okay, she's going to be interviewing people, right? That's what you do. I was pleasantly surprised, though, to see you're actually pounding the pavement and actually picking up the phone <laughs> and in actually trying to get answers uh, for these women, correct? Exactly. The old school way of journalism yeah. <laughs> where uh, we traveled we traveled all across the country all summer into the fall. I really wanted to tell the every woman's story. Uh, so we feature for the very first time three exclusive interviews with fast food workers, minimum wage women uh, who work at McDonald's. Uh, some are still there, some are not, but they all allege that they were harassed on the job, in some cases even assaulted on the job, and that nothing was done. Were and you able to so, get some yeah, answers? Yeah, I pound the pavement. Yeah, so, so you're going to see me jumping out of a lot of cars in this documentary <laughs> on Monday night because, um, you know, on behalf of these women who've never had their voices heard, uh, I wanted to get some answers for them. And it was tough, uh, but, but we, we gave it our all <laughs> as we traveled all across the country. I think there's going to be some groundbreaking changes as a result of this documentary, potentially with a lot of companies, um, as they do some introspection and decide whether or not they're doing everything they can to make their work environment safe uh, for their women and their men. Have you seen changes already? I mean, it is interesting. That's why I think I was so happy that you're actually picking up the phone and trying to do, because it's one thing just to get the stories out there. Yes, that is step one. But then what's the follow up? What do we do as a country, you know, men and women, you know, to make this a better place to, to live and work? Yeah, it's such an astute point uh, because the first wave of courage is to actually find that bravery to come forward and tell your story. But then, you know, what are the consequences? I actually think that in my story, when I sued the chairman at Fox News two and a half years ago, that that, that was one of the reasons that some of the women that I actually spoke to in this doc felt the courage to also come forward because they actually saw consequences, right? But then what do we do after that? And what I found out over the last couple of years is that it's a tangled web to fix this issue. It's not just one thing. But at least in holding companies accountable for the policies that they have. And, you know, are they doing enough? Are they just following the letter of the law? Are they actually really going outside of the box to make it safer? Um, and that's what we're advocating in this documentary is that even if you have policies on the books, maybe they're, maybe that's not enough because women are still not finding the courage to come forward because they get blacklisted, right? Yeah. Um, men are not coming forward to defend women because they also get demoted or blacklisted if they stand up for a woman. So we need to change the inside of the corporate environment to actually honor those people that have the guts to come forward. And, and that's what I'm hoping the discussion will start with after people see this documentary Monday night. You know, it's interesting, Gretchen, I want to get your thought on, obviously, when you look back at your career path, I can imagine this is not where you thought you would end up at this age, at, you know, doing what you're doing now. What do you think of kind of how your career changed and, and what it means moving forward? Mm -hmm. Well, I actually uh, think that I'm a, a good role model for young people who may have a lot of passions mm -hmm. <laughs> and don't know exactly what they want to yeah. do in their life because my life has worked in mysterious ways. You know, I started out as a concert violinist as a kid. That was going to be my career. Then I wanted to be a lawyer. Not. Nah, I ended up going into television. Mm -hmm. um, and you're right. Like, it's not like I wake up and say, hey, I'm so glad that I'm one of the poster mm -hmm. people for sexual harassment in the workplace. But challenges in front of me, I've had them my whole life and I work incredibly hard. And I've just decided to try and make a difference on this issue. Um, and it's been a tremendous amount of, of work. But listen, um, just like when I decided to come forward, I finally realized if I don't do this, who will? And if I don't also do all this work now to try and make a difference and make it better for our children moving forward, then, then who will? And I want to be a good role model for other people to find the same amount of courage that I had to find to come forward. Gretchen, thank you so much for your time. The special airs on January 14th, and, and we look forward to seeing what's ahead for you as well in 2019, because we know this is not the end of it. Oh, well, thank you. I really appreciate it. People can check it out on Lifetime. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Gretchen.